You know, travel was not easy. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get started. We have like a bunch of people online uh, about. This is I'm gonna use both mics, one for the recording and one. So. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. So today is our privilege to have with us uh, Imam Dawood Haq, uh, who's no stranger to the community. Um, he's our dear Imam and brother who's been involved in the community from the 80s in the U.S. and around the world much earlier than that. He hails from um, the Bahamas and the Caribbean area. And his knowledge journey took him all around the world from the University of Medina and everywhere. Um, when you look at some of the oldest things we have in, in America of Islamic work, you'll find Imam Dawood's name on it. And also, I remember I was a couple of years ago, I visited as, as a vacation. We went to the island of Nassau and just a vacation. And we were trying to find a masjid and we searched uh, online in multiple places or like an Islamic community in that region, there was no masjid, but Imam Dawood's name kept coming up in every search because of the research and the work he did in the Bahamas. So uh, we are very honored to have him in New Jersey. He's a great resource. Uh, he's been no stranger to the Ikna, ILF, and all the masajid here. He's a great resource. He's been speaking on all of our platforms. Um, I have an Ikna convention flyer, from the 1990s, 1990 actually, so Imam Dawood was one of the speakers. So it's very uh, humbling for us to have him here. Today, our topic will be the manners related to the ill and deceased. And just for newcomers, um, we the first session was the manners related to conversations and speech. And the second session was uh, the manners related to the homes, entering homes and uh, leaving homes and things like that. Um, and today the topic is about illness and death and the manners related to that. How do you give condolences? What are the things that you do? Um, you know, um, and it's, it cannot be more relevant and timely. Um, everyone's heart is bleeding right now because what is going on in Gaza and there's so many Muslims that are losing their lives in Gaza and also natural disasters shortly before that. There was an earthquake right before that and before that and before that. It's like never ending. How do we deal with all of this? So we're going to hear from our Imam Daoud for roughly one hour and then you have the chance to ask questions. Do you prefer questions throughout or um, do you prefer towards the end or towards the end? Okay, so let him make the presentation and then when you have questions, save them and we will uh, try to honor your request. So let's see if this is. Okay, this is the audio. And then if you can put this here. Bismillah. Shukran Audu Belemina Shaitan, your Jim Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah, we will have a mean, was Salah to a Salam, Marasha from Marceline, said in Muhammad, while Ali, he was Sahbi or Salam, Allahumala El Malana Elam Alam Tana, in Naka and Talim Hakim, Mutuba Aleni and Mulana, in Naka and Tawab Rahim or Bashakri Sadri, we are Sierli Amri, while the time Melisani Kahu Kali Waba. Salam Alaikum Rahmatullah, I were a cat to. Uh, it is indeed an honor uh, to be here participating in this program uh, with uh, Sheikh Abu Zaid and uh, doing this presentation and talking about the etiquettes of life in Islam, uh, which is so important or which is so much needed in this day and age where uh, standards uh, are no longer accepted or agreed on. People do not believe in standards anymore. Uh, everything has become so fluid. Everything changes. This nothing is important. The, all the, the things that kept uh, stability and maintained stability uh, in the social and the, the spiritual life of people has become fluid. 
So people uh, don't really don't really understand what is happening anyway, and life has become very uh, up and down. Uh, so, but uh, adab or etiquettes or uh, manners, uh, Arabic in Arabic we use the word adab, uh, plural adab, and this adab or adab means to have good manners. It means that we should have good manners. Uh, and uh, adab, especially in the second form, adaba, it means that you 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 try to uh, inculcate uh, a culture and refineness in a person. And so uh, uh, adab uh, would be also a part of of training and teaching in this. And so Islam as a as a system of life, Islam as a complete system of life, uh, the the and it covers every aspect of life. And so uh, adab, uh, the adab of Islam, uh, is derived from the sources of Islam, which is Quran and Sunnah. The adab of Islam, the mannerisms and uh, an approach is from from the the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is is the exemplar. He's the uswa, and as the exemplar, uh, uh, part of his his role was to bring about refinement in character, refinement in in a human character, uh, as 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 he says, in my way to liutamim makarim al akhlaq that I've been raised to uh, bring about refinement in human character. And, and we see this was his life as it is. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this, this point of refinement in character, uh, to date, as we said, things have become so confusing uh, uh, to people today that some people might be confused, uh, confused between character and personality. They're confused between... Uh, character and personality. But character, basically, character is who you are on the inside, who you really are, whether good or bad. Because character can be good, it can be bad. So it is who you really are on the inside. That is character. And uh, uh, personality, however, personality is how you present yourself to others how you want people to see you. That is personality. Uh, 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 just like reputation. Reputation is how people actually see you, how they, how they refer to you and how they see you. So these we shouldn't get mixed up with these character, personality, and reputation. Personality, in reality, should be based on character. It should be based on character. How unfortunate today that uh, it isn't. So... Uh, personality represents character. So what happens is that uh, we have a whole lot of characters today with no character, and it's unfortunate uh, uh, for that. Uh, and so uh, in Islam, you know, the, the application and practice of Islamic uh, adab, it helps bring about that refinement in character. It brings about that refinement in character. Uh, 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 because Islam uh, establishes a criteria, as Allah refers in the Quran, that is a criteria. He sent the Quran as a criteria. Criteria means that there are specific standards and measurements by which you can construct social life and on which social life is based to bring about balance. Because uh, in the absence of rules and laws, there is chaos. Right? And therefore, Islam believes in order and not chaos. And I know the anarchists uh, do not like rules and regulations. This is why that everything has become fluid. They make everything fluid because you can change it. And because uh, anarchists, uh, those people who are anarchists, they, they love things to be fluid so they can do whatever they want and they can adjust how they want uh, and so on. So whether it be morals or standards or what, they, they tend to make everything fluid uh, uh, so they don't believe in absolutes. 
They do not believe in absolutes because absolutes are standards. Absolutes are standards. And uh, Islam teaches us to believe in absolutes. We understand absolutes. And this is how Islam is. Uh, so Islam, uh, you know, the, it, it established criteria, criteria for judging a person's character uh, or behavior or conduct. And it, it, it emphasizes it. It, 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 it determines uh, his or her relationship, their relationship uh, with the Lord, their relationship with themselves, their relationship uh, uh, with other people, the relationship in the society as a whole, and relationship even with nature. And so it sets standards. And this is why uh, when Muslims adopt the Islamic standards, you find that the Islamic society rise. And this is what made the Islamic society great in the past. But we then to start adopting the ways of others and then has diluted the, the, the whole understanding about the Islamic society. And so it's important for us uh, to touch on this. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be part of this program in talking about uh, uh, the standards uh, uh, of, 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 of etiquettes and, and good manners established by Islam uh, in this in relation to uh, illness and, and uh, death and, and things like this. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, two of his key attributes right, that is repeated over and over is our rahman and our Rahim. Our Rahman and our Rahim. And they're joined together. Right? They're joined together. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has enjoined these qualities on us as human beings. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rahman. And no one is our Rahman like Allah. He is the uh, the absolute benefactor, the absolute benefactor of humanity and of creation, uh, because no one can be would be a Rahman like he can be like him, and therefore he alone is our Rahman uh, uh, in this. But Rahim or Rahma in the sense of being compassionate, right? As is mentioned in the Hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made uh, 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 the, uh, the rahmah, his rahmah, into 100 parts. And one part he puts in the dunya. One part he has decreed for the dunya. And uh, uh, by this one part, that even the, 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 the wild animal will move its feet, its, lift its paw so it doesn't crush the young one. Uh, uh, this this is the level that Allah SWT has said, and Allah has maintained uh, uh, the other 99 parts so that he can demonstrate, he can show uh, uh, compassion on Qiyamah and forgive all things. And this is why Allah says in the Quran that in, in Qiyamah, in Allah Yagfir and Yushlakabi, wa Yagfiru ma duna dhalik. So that on the day of judgment on Qiyamah, uh, the only thing Allah says that he will not forgive is uh, a shirk, is polytheism. Because that is iftira Allah. It is like lying on God. <laughs> you know, It's lying on him. And, and when you lie on your creator, I mean, it's the worst thing you can do is to lie on him and, and fabricate stories about him. Right? And this is, a, you know, a shirk is a fabrication. You know, it's, it's false. It is iftira. And, and and so on and if a person even in this life if a person does iftira he does shirk in this life as long as he's breathing or she's breathing if they ask forgiveness because of Allah's compassion Allah will still forgive it right he Allah will forgive it so even even the person who says I don't believe in God if he repents and he he's, and 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 asks Allah's forgiveness Allah forgives him because Allah is our Rahman and he's our Rahim. Right? He's our Rahman and uh, our Rahim. So, he, but if a person dies in that state, Allah says that he will not forgive because he has enough time to 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 assess himself 
and to correct himself. But if he doesn't or she doesn't, then Allah says in the hereafter, he will not forgive that. He will not forgive. But anything else, right? That anything else, he will forgive anything other than that. So that's the only thing Almighty God Allah said that he's not going to forgive uh, uh, because Allah SWT is uh, as Ar Rahman, uh, Ar Rahim. And so we are encouraged uh, uh, to, to, to show mercy to each other and be compassionate with one another. We are encouraged to be compassionate with each other. And so uh, 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 the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informs us that uh, uh, the duty, one of the duties of uh, uh, of brotherhood in Islam, and Islam has brought is a brotherhood. The brotherhood, there are rules, there are rights and obligations uh, uh, within the brotherhood of Islam, and he mentions that uh, one of those rights is that we should visit. Uh, or brother or sister when they are ill, right? As in the hadith uh, of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, when he said, "Kala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, haq al-Muslim al-Muslim khams." He says there are five duties of a Muslim over another Muslim: read the salam, returning the salam, iyad al-murid, visiting the sick, ittibal janais, following his janaza. Uh, responding to his invitation uh, and uh, praying for the person who sneezes uh, and there are a number of, 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 of uh, other hadith in this there's another hadith uh, also from Abu Huraira who mentions Muslim Muslim Sitta and there's the next one where he says Muslim Muslim so there are a number of hadith uh, uh, mentioning the, the the duties of a Muslim to another Muslim, and and and, and he mentioned when he mentioned the six when the Rasulullah mentioned, he said laki ida laki to fasallim ali. So not only uh, uh, responding, but when you meet the Muslim, it is an obligation to give him salams. So giving salams is 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 on is the right of a believer, is the right of a Muslim of another Muslim that when you italakitahu fasallim alayhi, when you meet him, give him salams. So the giving of the salam is is a, 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 a duty and responding to the salam, as the earlier the other hadith already mentioned, uh what the salam, responding to the salam. And even Allah emphasized this. Uh, response to the salam if you are given a greeting then you should respond with a better greeting or return the same greeting uh, so and 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 this both of these hadith the the uh, uh, and the, he he mentions uh, uh, the iyadul murid visiting the sick visiting the sick so when our brother is sick then our sister we should uh, 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 visit them. We should visit them. That is that is recommended. Uh, uh, the, the the believers would always in Medina. They would always when they around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They would come to the masjid. They had, of course, they used to make uh, 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 tur take turns sometimes, and because they had to do their own business and stuff. But they would always be no looking out for a brother, looking out for a sister. They missed them. Okay, then they'll go and visit them. The Prophet himself will go visit. Right? He's known there's so many a hadith of the Prophet actually going and visiting people. Because this was a, a practice that he, he recommended. And, and, and he mentioned uh, 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 in the hadith, uh, hadith of Muslim uh, uh, from Thawban, uh, called Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Muslim, إِذَا عَادَ أَخَاهُ Muslim. He says, when uh, a Muslim visit the sick, his sick uh, uh, Muslim brother or sister, he says, Lam yazal fi khurfat al jannah hatta al Yani khurfa, as was explained in the hadith, rod al jannah, and the fruits of it. So he gains the fruits, he's enjoying the fruits of jannah. 
as long as he's visiting with his brother or sister. As long they're visiting with the brother or sister who is ill, they enjoy they gain the benefits of this. So it's a great, I mean, it's great benefit in visiting the, the sick. So not only is it, it, waiting in your scale also. So visiting the sick is important. And when you visit the sick, uh, uh, we should pray for them. We should pray for the sick when you visit them because this boosts the morale uh, of of the of the person, so in in visiting them, uh, we we we're able to cheer them up, and we would like you know for us for that to happen to us. So it 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 was it's something that we should do, and this was practiced by the prophet and encouraged by him that he uh, uh, visited the sick and he would cheer he would cheer them up. So uh, when you visit. It shows a level of concern. It shows a level of concern, and we should always be concerned about the fears of our brothers. As 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 the saying goes, "Malam yatambi umum al muslimin alaysa minhum." The one who is not concerned about the affairs of the of the Muslims, then he's not one of them. He's not part of them, right? And this is why uh, 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 our hearts burn and hurt at this particular point in time of our brothers and sisters, uh, what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Palestine at this time. Because of uh, that connection, as as you mentioned in the hadith, uh, uh, an authentic hadith, uh, uh, that that uh, the, the, uh, the, the Muslim, uh, that the believers, in the meaning, in their love for one another, him and the compassion that they show for each other, but the art of him and that mutual concern they have for one another, is like a is like a body. It is who old if any organ from it becomes uh, ill or or has a complaint, the rest of his body will respond with a uh, 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 fever and restlessness. And we see this, you know, it happens if you happen to to walk and you hit your toe on something. Uh, your toe is there, and you and and you you hit your toe and it, and 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 it's damaged, it's hurt. You feel it, even to your head. You're feeling your toe, and his toe is down there, and the down there, and you're up here, and you still feel you still worry about your toe. And this is how believers are. And so, uh, uh, visiting demonstrates that that concern uh, that they have for other. It also, it, it, it helps strengthen uh, 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 the, the bonds of brotherhood. It helps strengthen the, the, the bonds of brotherhood and, and, and social relations. And so it's important that we should do so. And when we do visit, that we should, uh, uh, the visit should be one of, 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 of cheer. He wants to console the person and cheer them up because uh, uh, they, it is, they're going through a mehla, they're going through a challenge. They're going through a challenge. And sometimes uh, the news that they get from the doctor might be so heavy on them. And they just need to be cheered up a bit. They just need to, uh, uh, because uh, uh, they, they have to deal with it. And therefore, uh, uh, we should. Uh, try to cheer the sick up when we pay a visit to them, uh, his or her, uh, 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 and, and we should help them uh, in this handling it, uh, what 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 they're faced with. So we should also pray for them. Not only we should cheer them up, but she would she, she we should pray for them, uh, as as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he did. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reports in a hadith. He says, in Allah Azza wa Jal Yaqul Yom al There's a long hadith. And uh, in, a, in a, a long hadith, he says that on the day of judgment, Allah SWT will question the, his servants. And he would say uh, to them, Yabna Adam maridtu falam ta'ibn. He says, O son of Adam, I was sick and you didn't visit me. I was sick and you didn't visit me. 
and he would respond, "Call, uh, Ya Rab, كيف أعودك وأنت رب الأهلمين." He says, "Oh my Lord, how how can I visit you? You're the Lord of the worlds. How can I visit you?" And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will respond to him, "أما علمت أن عبدي فلانا such and such a person of my servants married that he was sick." And you didn't visit him. Uh, you didn't visit him. Don't you know that if you had visited him, you would find me there? If you visited him, you would find me there. And so the, the visiting the sick, this is hadith of in, in Sahih Muslim. And anyway, it's, it's in, encouraging this. And so when Rasulullah went, he not only cheered up, he prayed for them. He cheered them up and he prayed for them. Uh, in the hadith of Ibn Abbas, uh, 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 Prophet ﷺ went to visit one of the Bedouin Arabs who was sick. And uh, uh, so whenever he went to visit people who were sick like that, uh, called Laba. Uh, he would always say, Ya bat la bat tahurun, insha'Allah. This here is, you know, your sickness is a form of purification for you. Your sickness is a form of purification for you. It will expiate your sins, expiate your mistakes, because that is what Allah SWT has promised the believers. That, uh, 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 Anything that afflicts them, that he will use it as a means of expiating their wrongs, their mistakes, and their shortcomings, and their faults, and their, and their sins, that he will use it to expiate. So actually, one hadith, uh, the Prophet mentioned, Hatta shawka. even the pricking of a, 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 of, of, of a, 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 he gets pricked with a thorn, the pricking of a thorn, Allah will, will use it as a means of expiation for for the believers, uh, uh, and this 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 is 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 so uh, encouraging for the believer when you explain this to him. It helps him to calm him down or calm her down, that she understands or he understands that uh, uh, Allah has decreed this for you. But this is benefit in it, although it is is challenging. There is benefit. There's benefit in, in, in this. So uh, uh, the sickness is this. And uh, 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 the, the, in the hadith from, from Umm al-Mu'mineen, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha uh, says uh, that the Prophet uh, uh, Yudubat Ahli, uh, that he would visit uh, uh, his family members when he visit his family members and they, when, they, when they are sick. And he would touch them with his wife, the, uh, 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 his rub his white his right hand over them. We are called Allahumma Rabbil Nas. He says, "O oh Allah, Lord of mankind, Adhibul Bats, remove from them this hardship, this difficulty. Wash feet and heal them, and heal them, and to shed because you are the healer. You are the healer." So, la uh, shifa uh, illa shifa, and there is none can grant shifa as you can. Shifa and la yugadu sakuma, a healing that will not be followed with illness. And so he would make this a mutafikan ali hadith, and a rasulah would make this dua whenever he visited them. And so we encourage to learn some, and there are other duas. That we can make what is important. If we can learn some of these du'as and we make them when we visit the sick, uh, uh, it's so important to uh, uh, to think. Even you know, and also uh, in 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 this is recommended. He can also make rukia. Sometimes he recommended making a rukia. Rukia is where uh, uh, you 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 recite some uh, verses from Quran uh, uh, and 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 to 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 uh to help with the healing of the person. Uh so 
uh, one, one note in relation to this though is that uh, I that I think if you sometimes you go off area this one that you should not uh, um, give up uh, or abandon medical treatments just to do root care. You should not, uh, you know, do that uh, because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam practice, you know, uh, 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 Tadawi. He would practice using medicine. So this was part of the way he never, the Prophet was not an extremist. One of the th beautiful things about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you can follow him, close your eyes and follow him, that you know that you're going to be going right. He was never extremist. The prophet was never an extremist. So he never goes to any extreme. He always took a middle course. And he always encouraged us to, to take that, 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 that middle course. And so the, 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 you know, we should make dua for them because uh, the dua of the sincere, the sincere dua or the dua from the heart of the, the sincere heart of a person that is accepted. As as the Prophet emphasized, a dua mustajab. The dua I responded to. This is why it's important for us at this time that we are every all the Muslims should be making dua for our brothers and sisters because that is the most that we can do at this point. Right? As what is happening uh, to our brothers and sisters, we should be making sincere dua because dua is responded to. Right? A dua. Mustajab, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi emphasized that you can make when you make dua, that the dua is responded to. And as Allah SWT always, and this is emphasizing what Allah mentioned in the Quran, right? Right? Allah SWT says, Say to my servant, beseech me, call on me, right? Supplicate to me. And I will respond to you. And Allah loves that we make dua. Allah loves us to make dua. Right? And and, and he dislikes that we we do not make dua to him because uh, not making dua uh, uh, as a demonstration uh, uh, that uh, that we are self-sufficient. We don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When in reality we do need Allah in every sense. We do need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every sense. That's why Allah says, Inna ladhi yaqstakbuna on ibadati siyad khuluna jahannam adakhirin. Because a dua, as Prophet mentioned, a dua hul ibadah. Dua is, is unique ibadah. is unique worship. is a unique form of worship. Where we worship directly Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with our in, in intermediaries, and it demonstrates our dependence on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and so we should uh, uh, make du'a uh, and uh, so on. Uh, but we should it means we still still use our medications and what have you that is there. Uh, another thing in relation to this is how uh, uh, you know we may, when we visit. Uh, the length of the visit will depend on the kind of uh, or degree of illness that the person have. So that that that, that the degree of sickness would determine uh, uh, both the nature and the length of the visit, because sometimes that they might that person you know, and the doctors might say that you can only stay for a few minutes. So you just go in, give your salams, and leave. So when that is the case, you know, follow. Uh, that's one of the things. When you go to, to visit up there in, in an institution, follow the rules of the institution. Don't think that because, you know, we should go like some people will go and they want to make a fuss with the with the, the people that is there, uh, the administrators there. That, that is their job, to maintain... Uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, order in, in, in keeping the, 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 the patient safe and what have you. So if they say only a few minutes, then you spend only a few minutes. If they say they only want one or two people at the bedside, because this might most time when, it's, when they're in intensive care, it is, it is, it is a challenge. So uh, they might say only one person or two persons at a time. So follow whatever instructions that is there uh, from, the, from the institution. Uh, uh, when you go, 
uh, time. But then sometimes that they might not be in that critical state and you might be able to go and sit with them for a few minutes and stuff like that. So that the, the, this, the, the, the degree of sickness uh, would determine, you know, how long you you stay and stuff like that. So there's no fixed time to say two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, that, that, that will be determined by the circumstance and what are the rules are. And so, uh, uh, as I said, you should up observe the rules, uh, have division in times, uh, whatever the if they're in, is in an in institution, uh, they have visiting time. So don't try to go outside of the time when there is. Uh, and they have the time go from this time to that time. So you want to go over time and stuff like that. We need to observe rules, the rules in relation to things like that in such institutions uh, 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 or like that. So we should observe the rules and regulations that is established uh, that, that by them. If they say don't bring any food, don't take food, don't take food. Don't take any food there to them. You know, because I know we want to take stuff for them, but they say don't take anything, don't, then don't do so. You know, uh, 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 observe the timing and, and, and the length and how many how many visitors at a time. And so on. all this is, is important when we go to visit uh, the sick person. Uh, when we go to them, uh, we should uh, you shouldn't say things that will have a negative effect on them. That is, you know, is going to bring about, cause them to worry more or make them more sick than they are. Uh, so uh, we should not uh, 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 do so. Rather, we should encourage them to, to uh, uh, put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to accept the qadr of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, knowing that uh, uh, this was the decree of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? And 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 teaching them this that this happens. And then you see, buna illa ma Allahu lana. Nothing will befall us except what Allah has decreed for us, and that is part of our iman, part of our belief system that we believe in the qadr of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And 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 illness uh, uh, is not. Is not a, a calamity. It's not a calamity in the sense that uh, for the for the believer, once you truly believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, it's not a calamity to the point that it's going to make us uh, despondent. Despondent. Uh, uh, yes, we will feel ill and we will feel sad and we might feel uh, uh, so on. But uh, despondency is not part of who we are as believers. The believer should never become despondent because Allah says, do not become despondent. Allah SWT says, La taqnatu rahmatillah. Never become despondent of Allah's mercy. Never become despondent of Allah's mercy. We should never ever at any time become despondent to the mercy of Allah SWT. And 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 this, you know, uh, 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 as a matter of fact, when when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and the angel, uh, 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 when he came and he he the angel brought the news, uh, Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam told him about the news when he was going to destroy. They were going to destroy the the the, the Kamalut, the people of Lot, uh, and and they stopped by Ibrahim to give him the good news. Uh, of a child that that is uh, uh, Sarah will have a, have a child, and uh, he uh, when they told him, of course, Ibrahim is a very old man at this time. His wife is old uh, uh, at this time, you know, and so Ibrahim alayhi salatu where is it, where is it, you know, the, the the question. He just he just raised a question, not out of disbelief, not out of of yes. You know of 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 uh, um, uh, but he he raised the question and uh, and and the angel uh, uh, responded with you. They responded to Allah talk no to me rahmatillah. The angel said, him, "Don't don't despair of Allah's mercy, right?" And Ibrahim's response, a beautiful response. He said, "Wa man ma a a a a a wa man yakum rahmat rabbihi illa dhali." Uh, who who despairs of Allah's mercy except the one who's already gone astray? Right? 
who who disappears you despair of Allah's mercy except the one that has already gone astray. So only those who have gone astray will despair, will go into such despair that they do not uh, 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 accept or function uh, uh, right. So we should always encourage them accepting the color of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, uh, thing. So we should, as I said, spend enough time with them to encourage them, uh, uh, but not too long to burden them, right? We should spend enough time with them to encourage them, and uh, uh, because if you f f f, there's no restrictions on how long you can stay. Uh, then if you're too brief, you know it makes them feel slighted uh, that you don't, you know, you not spend a few minutes to cheer them up. Uh, so you don't want to make them feel slighted, but then uh, uh, also you don't want to stay so long that you burden them. And they don't want to tell you, well, look, you know, I, I need a rest. So we need to use our, uh, uh, our good common sense uh, in this respect uh, to make sure that, that we're taking care of, of them, uh, of them. Uh, some of the, 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 the mannerisms or the manners of visitation that we want to talk about. In, yeah, in visiting a sick person, uh, uh, you must be considerate of the person. Know that they're ill. You're visiting the sick person. So you should, this should always be before your mind. So when you go there, you want to, uh, uh, to, to leave a good impression on that person. You want to leave a good impression on that person. So, uh, 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 like in the, in, in the, the, uh, Adam, the text from the text is, is, is mentioned about uh, dress, dress appropriately when you go to visit them, dress inappropriately uh, to visit them because you don't want to go in an ostentatious dress to make the person feel bad. Uh, uh, you know, you want to dress appropriately to, to, to the circumstance in which uh, you're going, so uh, properly and appropriately. Uh, and 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 you should have uh, light conversations with them. Don't have heavy conversations. They don't need to discuss heavy stuff, right? Because at this point they they have enough to worry about. So you don't want to have these heavy conversations about this. Year and you go and, and you're talking about all this heavy stuff that that you know it burdens the person more. Uh, uh, you leave them more burdened, worried about uh, about things. So. Uh, uh, you know, be be more. The, the conversation should be light and inspirational at the same time, right? It should be light and inspirational. So when you leave, the person feel, you know, the spirits are lifted. They feel so much, you know, they feel so much better uh, after you after you are gone. So it should be inspirational uh, when you visit when you visit in the sick. Um. Uh, also, when you 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 can talk to them about what you know, of course you can ask them how they're feeling and stuff like that. Uh, but we should be cautious in this also and circumspect and not be too um, uh, prying. You know, don't 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 pry too much into their business. You know, it is it is you know. Uh, uh, some people like to, you know, want to know everything about what's this and that. No, it's, it is not. It is not important uh, because you know you're not there for that. You're not there for that, and and and, and you're not a doctor anyway. So uh, you don't need to pry too deep into their the into the into their business. You know. So so uh, you keep the, keep this in mind, and, and and don't talk about things that are depressing and disturbing. Don't talk about issues that are depressing and and dis disturbing, and for sure don't play doctor, right? When you go there, if that's not your profession. Don't play doctor, right? You want to <laughs> you go and you want to tell them about what they should do and what is this and what they shouldn't be doing and stuff. You're not a professional. Don't don't you go there for not not for that uh, and and discuss so that for instance, if if you go there, you see something that you're not too happy about and. Uh, you think might be a little objectionable, 
don't discuss this with the parents and themsel themselves. Discuss it with the administrators, the people who are there. Talk to his doctor. Talk to the, the nurse. Talk to somebody. Don't don't put a, a problem on him so that, he, that the person begin to question whether or not they get any kind of service that they need to get or what, or the kind of treatment that they should be getting or so. No, don't, don't place that burden on them. Discuss that matter with, with the people who are there because sometimes it, 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 it is better. Sometimes this situation might, might, might warrant to, to know if you might to know, but uh, it's best to go and talk with the doctor by himself. All right, as soon as you know, when I visit, uh, sometimes I don't visit with the brother, and, and I realize the situation is not really improving, you know. So who, I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to ask why. Why, why you're not getting? Why well, you're not getting improvement? Why there's this and that? You did no. I'm not going to ask him. I'm going to sit with the doctor. I want to see the doctor personally. Okay, what's the situation? Could you tell me what the prognosis? What's happening? What's the so and so and so? The doctor then will be able to talk to you and say, well, look, this is the situation. So you understand, right? So you don't want to put that burden. On, on the patient uh, 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 thing. So, uh, we, so we should always remember that in visiting the sick, the purpose is to improve the mental, spiritual, and physical well-being of the patient. Your visit should be, you know, your goal of your visit should be to improve the mental, spiritual, and physical well-being of uh, 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 the patient and not to leave them depressed or leave them uh, all worried and stuff like that. So it's important to understand this particular point. Uh, in terms of expressing illness when we are ill and how we should express ourselves when we are ill, that if we are afflicted with some illness or disease or ailment or poor health, uh, uh, we should know that this happened by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this is by the permission of Allah. And it is important, therefore, uh, that we shouldn't uh, curse the illness. We shouldn't curse our condition. Uh, uh, we shouldn't uh, you know, become despondent and so on uh, uh, about what our situation is, right? Uh, we should, uh, we should, you know, in something like that, where our, our faith should be strengthened. Our faith should be strengthened uh, uh, because we believe in the, in, in the, in the uh, khayr and shar of qadr. We believe in the good and the bad of qadr that is part of our belief system. We believe in the color of Allah SWT. And, and, and we know that uh, 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 nothing is going to uh, affect us or afflict us except what Allah SWT has determined for us. Right? As what Allah has determined for us. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has uh, determined that uh, the believers, he will test us. Right? And the Prophet Sallallahu informs us that uh, those who Allah SWT loves and want good for them, you sub min who? Allah will test them. Those who Allah loves and want good for them, he will test them. So tests and calamity, you know, musiba uh, in this dunya is good for the believer. Is good, so we should never get, you know, why this happened to me and why this, and we should never go down that road, right? Because uh, 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 we know it is good, as the Prophet mentioned in the authentic hadith. He said, "Ajaban li amr mukmin," right? Ajaban li amr mukmin, kullu Everything that happens to him is good for him. Right? And this and this is only in the case of the mu'min, those who believe in Allah, not for anybody else. Anything that happens to him is good for them. Right? And this is only in the case of the believers. Right? In the case of the believers. He said, 
Shakar. He says, if good happens to him, he's thankful. And Allah rewards him for it. So it's good for him. And if bad comes to him, you know, he is patient. And this is also good for him because Allah reward patience. Because Allah SWT loved this. In Allah, you have the sabirin. Allah loves the sabirin. And he loves the shakirin. So in both cases, even because of uh, 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 his understanding. So when we understand our faith, right? We understand our faith. Uh, 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 we are able to do so. But very often, because of the lack of knowledge and wisdom concerning our situation, you know, very often, most, you know, believers sometimes we do not exercise the kind of patience and steadfastness that should be there. Right? But we should uh, do so. So we, 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 we uh, because uh, uh, if, if, if we exercise patience and steadfastness as is required, you know, it will uh, help us to avoid being uh, depressed or ungrateful. Coming depressed or acting in an ungrateful manner. And so it is important, as Allah mentioned uh, 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 in Surah Ghaban, right? Surah Ghaban. Uh, 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 which is Surah 64, uh, Ayah 11, Allah says, Ma min There is no musiba that falls. There is no musiba covers unit, you know, covers disasters, it covers calamity, it covers affliction. He says, None of this befalls a person except by the permission of Allah. When we understand that and accept it and embrace it because we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِي قَلْبَ Because of our mean, Allah will guide our hearts to its acceptance and to what is best, what is right, in acting the right way and responding the right way to it. Right? As long as we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah knows everything. Allah SWT knows everything. All right? And so once we, we, we keep this before us, so uh, 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 complaining to, uh, 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 to Allah about our situation uh, uh, is okay, is allowed. Right? We can complain to Allah. As a matter of fact, we, shouldn't, we should complain only to Allah. Right? We should complain only to Allah. We shouldn't complain to anybody else. Right? Yes, you can ask people's help with things that they can help you with. But we shouldn't complain to anybody other than Allah SWT because only Allah SWT, is, he, he has absolute knowledge of everything and have absolute power to do anything. And therefore, we should only complain to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We should not, you know, we shouldn't be complaining to people. You know, you meet some people and they're always complaining. You know, sometimes, you know, there's some people, you know, that uh, uh, that, that you, you like to avoid because they complain so much. You might avoid people because they always complain. Every time you meet them, they're always complaining. Right? So, uh, 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 you, you know, it, it, it depresses you because of the amount of, that they're always doing that. So you, we, we, we should not complain, right? Except to Allah. We complain only to Allah. Because that's the prophets. They, 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 you know, uh, as, as the prophets did. Uh, uh, Prophet Yaqub, you know, in Ashkub, Bathi, Gohuzni, in Allah. Yeah, I complain only about my problem to Allah. I complain to nobody. When, they, when, when they're talking to me, don't. Like, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not bothering you. I'm complaining to Allah. <laughs> so don't, don't don't bother with me. But I'm, but my situation. I'm complaining to Allah. Allah I can do something about my situation. You can't. So I'm not complaining to you. So it's understanding. Not understanding. The prophets did this. Prophet Ayub. You know, Prophet Ayub. He he he, he complained to Allah Swt. You know, Masini of Abdur. You know, Allah. Some harm has come to me. 
you know, uh, uh, he complained to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So, uh, and, and so, so this happened. You know, the, the, the prophets themselves would come, but they complain only to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They complain to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, you can uh, and so uh, so to Anbiya. For many cases, no alayhi salatu salam. Right, no alayhi salatu salam. He complained to Allah. Right, is only what be let us Allah alman kafin the year. Any, you know, he complained. Allah, I you know, I call in a doubt to call me Layla on a heart. Allah is in the dua ilafira. Yeah, they don't respond to me. Right, and so he complained to Allah. The prophets would complain. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he would complain to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And his, of course, the prophets complain is different. As we know, you hear the Prophet وسلم, he's in the garden, he's coming from uh, uh, Ta'if after being stoned by the people, and he's coming to a, a plain, complaint to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on a higher level, it's a different level. He says, well, as long as you're not angry with me, I'm good. No, he's not complaining that, oh, my feet is burnt, my feet is blood is running. These people stoned me, these people insulted me, this, that, 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 that. No. He says, as long as you're not angry with me, I'm good. Right? And he's and, and and physically he's not in a good state, right? Physically he's not in a good state, but he's not complaining about that. He was more concerned that you know pleasing Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So when Jibril Ali Salatu Salam brought the angel of the uh, 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 the mountains and says, you know, look, I mean, Allah sent the angel of the mountain. You know, if you want, I will we'll crush the people. He said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for that. Right? So uh, uh, complaining to Allah. Uh, uh, is good, you know, uh, uh, but we should only complain to Allah, right? We should only complain to Allah because uh, uh, only Allah can do something about it, you know. So, you, so, and so, and yeah, you find a lot about uh, uh, these stories about the prophets, Prophet Noah and Ayub, uh, Prophet Zachariah, when he complained, you know, Allah must see the kibir, Allah, I, I, I'm old. And and I ain't got no money, I ain't got nobody to to inherit from me and stuff like they 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 complain. You find this in uh, in Surah Anbiya, uh, so Anbiya is Surah twenty one, right? So you'll find find it in there, you know, around, uh, uh, to some complaints in there. I don't remember the actual ayahs right now <laughs> off of my head, but in Surah in Surah Anbiya, you find many of those complaints. And Surah No, you find the the complaints in it uh, uh, also. So. Uh, but the, the 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 prophets would complain, right, to Allah. But we should not complain to other people. We shouldn't complain our situation uh, uh, to everybody. You know, when we when we're gonna express our figure, yes, we can express our, our situation about our situation. But we should also we should do so always with giving thanks to Allah. You know, Alhamdulillah, la kulli hal. Alhamdulillah. Ala kulli hal, giving praise to and thanks to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal, wa audu min 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 ahli ahli nar. Right. Uh, uh, so 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 we 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 don't want to 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 come uh, use this as a means of of complaining. Uh, uh, so uh, complaints tend to uh, uh, reflect a, a sense of ungratefulness to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because. Uh, there's so much to be thankful for, right? We have so much to be thankful for, or, 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 or to put it another way, what we have to thank, what uh, what we have to be thankful for is greater than what we have to complain about, right? Is is it's, that is the situation of the believer? As Allah says, but in ta'udu Allahi la tuhsuha. If you try to count Allah's favors, you never encompass them. So what you have to complain about is far less than what you have to, 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 to give thanks for. So we should spend more time giving thankfulness than uh, 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 complaining uh, 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 about, about things. You know, and this, 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 this is important uh, for us as to understand. Some just general reflections, relation to some points in relation to this. Uh, uh, illness and uh, calamities and stuff like that should make us more reflective. When these things happen, we should more reflect, should make us more 
reflective. Uh, the, because we are believers. We are believers. And living in this dunya is a place of trial and test for us. And, you know, I had a, a very good friend of mine, uh, Brother Ahmed, may Allah well, have mercy on him, we grant him Jannah for those. Uh, he's passed. Uh, he he would always, you know, we used to do Dava together and stuff. And when everything, and when things are running really smooth and we're getting things done and no difficulties, and, and he would always say, you know, you know, that would, you know, like uh, Allah preparing us for a test. Because he's worried, you know, how things are going so smooth. <laughs> We're supposed to have <laughs> this, you know, this is a place of test, which got difficulty in it. But anything's going easy and things running smoothly, he used to get worried. He used to get <laughs> worried at that time. Like how we had to win things running smooth. We want things running smooth. That's the difference between, you know, uh, uh, then and now. You know, we want everything to be easy going, but, you know, because that's who we are. Uh, 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 as insane, you know, uh, insane as, as as people, you know, insane, you know, means the 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 person who 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 is an ease, you know, he 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 loves ease and comfort and nice company and what have you, right? So we always love good things. We don't like bad things at all. That's how he is. Allah said, you know, he he's wa innahu li hubbil khairi la shadid. We have an intense love for good stuff. We have an intense love for good stuff. With the social for your awesome kanut. And anything bad happen, he become more depressed and despondent. You know, that's how we are. That's, that's the kind of, you know. So uh, 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 the, the, the standard set by Islam is, but Islam is different. It's telling us, no, what you have, you know, to, to be thankful for is way more than what you have, you know, to complain about. So if you focus on the positive as opposed to the negative, your mental health, your, 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 your disposition, your attitude, your everything is going to be different. It's going to be different. You know, and this, this is, this, this is, so, so uh, uh, when calamity strikes, we should become more reflective. Reflect on it, that Allah SWT is testing us, uh, 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 because the more thankful we are, you know, the more positive or come, and positivism, it helps our health, it improves our health, right? Both, both mentally and physically. Right, both mentally and physically. So it's so emphasize that positive approach, that positivism, and, 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 and being reflective might help us. You know, oh, maybe uh, uh, something happened. Then we, you know, oh, I need to adjust my 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 way of living. I'm uh, my God, I need to adjust my eating habits. I need to just so so at least you can learn from it because oh, I mean, I'm I'm pre I'm pre pre diabetic. You know, the doctor says to you, you're, you're pre-diabetic. You know, when my doctor said to me that a couple of years ago, she said, you're pre-diabetic. I said, what? She says, yes, you're pre-diabetic. You, you know, you're going to kill yourself if you, know, <laughs> if you don't correct yourself. Right? If you don't correct yourself, you know. So you got to give up sweet. You got to give up salt. You got to give up this. You got to that, that. Okay, so I had, to, I had to make a change and adjust my diet. Uh, that I did, I adjust my diet, change it, you know, I, 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 and I want to do a drastic change, so I give up all salt, I give up all sugar, that is a drastic thing to do, because I love sugar, I love, <laughs> I love sweet stuff, you know, so I had to do a drastic thing, and I love salt too, you know, so, because we grew up <laughs> with salt, so you, get, you know, that's, that's the background in which we came, we came from. You know, uh, 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 from all people as uh, as being former slaves, they always feed us uh, salty stuff. You know, that's what we that we used to eat a lot. So that is, you know, from in the Caribbean, coming from that background, you know, that's why you find that uh, 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 medicines that is uh, for for uh, diabetes and, and 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 hypertension doesn't work on us very well. 
because uh, it's not uh, because of our, our background and how it's happened into us. It doesn't uh, work as well on us as it would on other people who didn't come from that background. All right. So the 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 uh, it helps you, you know, by reflection. It helps you to 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 correct yourself. Well, it helps you to correct yourself and, and, and to also it helps you to turn to Allah. You know, when you're sick, you call on Allah most. When you got a calamity, then you call on Allah as Allah as many people, you know, that if they must share at that point in time, you know, you, you call on Allah all the time. Right? So sickness is good. Sometimes if you know the only way people make dua is and call on Allah is because they get sick. Or there's some calamity for them. That otherwise, they won't call on Allah. And some people won't go to Manchester unless they get into trouble. They got some problems or stuff like Then they can call on Allah because they're too busy outside of that. So, you know, sickness and, and, and calamities and stuff like that is good for the believer. It helps us to always turn to Allah and, 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 and to put our trust on Him. Right? And to put our trust on Him. This, this is, is very important uh, uh, for us. And so on. So, uh, uh, in terms of sickness, this 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 is 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 was important. In terms of 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 relations to to the, the manners we should exercise or at a time of of death, right? Uh, death is an inevitability. Death is an Inevitability. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us in Al Imran, "Kullu nafsin da'ikatul maut." Every soul will taste of death. Every person will experience death. So death is uh, is not uh, just by the way. Death is every one of us has should have or must have an expect of death. There's one thing we're certain about is that we're going to die. But we might not be certain about a lot of stuff. But if there's one thing that we are certain about is that uh, 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 we're going to die. And, and people who don't, I know people don't like to talk about death and uh, today especially people like to be in a state of happiness so they don't want to talk about death, they don't want to think about death and stuff like that. So they tend to think about uh, uh uh, that talk about when you talk about death or think about that 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 you're being morbid, you know. There's more. There's not being. It's being realistic. There's not not morbidity. There's there's being being realistic when you think and reflect uh, on, on death, you know, it's because every soul will taste. So the, the the time, the place, and the manner, you know, uh, has already been decreed by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right, is already been decreed by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, and and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, as Allah mentioned, He says, "Ma kan li nafsin an tamuta illa bi idni Allahi kitaban muajjala." Right, and it is not for any, it is not possible for anyone to die except by the permission of Allah at the time decreed. So nobody gonna die before the time, straight up. So you, there's one thing you're not aware about people, about life and stuff like that. You're not going to die until Allah SWT set the time, until the time that Allah has fixed for you. No one can uh, can die. And this is this is the reality that 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 we do, that we see every day. The, 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 you go to the doctor and the doctor says you got six months. Now you got three months. And five years later you're still kicking, you know, still alive and kicking strong. All right. So, because no one can, no one can. That determination is by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. That determination is by Allah Subhanahu. Wa this is why we don't fear, fear for uh, in that context like that. Remember, uh, uh, Sheikh Abu Al Mududi, uh, back in, in 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 the day when 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 uh, uh, they had martial law in Pakistan, you know. And, and, and the field marshal who, you know, a Yugan who, who, who ruled at the time, and he condemned him to death because he wrote something on the on the Kadianiya uh, movement and stuff like that and so on. 
And they told him, you know, so people come to him and says, you know, uh, Sheikh, you need to, you know, apologize and try to recant. And he says, you know, <laughs> what's wrong with you? What they say, I'm not telling any lies. What I'm saying is true. I'm speaking the truth. Right? I'm speaking the truth. What I wrote is true. It's not false. So why should I uh, 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 go and bow to Ayub Khan and stuff about that? Ayub Khan doesn't control my life. He, 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 didn't, he, didn't, he didn't create me. And he didn't determine what, anything from me. So there's no, and he absolutely refused. Right? He absolutely refused to, to go and bow to Ayub Khan. Ayub Khan died before him. <laughs> Ayub Khan died before Amul al Maududi. He left a ripe old age. May Allah have mercy on him. Grant him gender to pronounce. All right. He was one of our, he, he, he's one of the teachers that, that I'm one of our, our earliest teachers that, uh, that, that, that we benefit from. You know, he and, and uh, 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 um, uh, Sheikh Aslahi and, and, and these, 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 these people, you know. Um, Hassan Ali Sheikh and so on. This, you know, this, uh, uh, this, uh, Hassan Ali Nadwi and people like this. They, 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 they are the early scholars, sheikhs that, you know, that was youngsters that we learned from, that we always, you know, would listen to and they, 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 they guided us and show us and tell us how, how, how we could function. So they, they, they were the teachers in, in, in my day. All right. Uh, so, the 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 he the, this is one of the things we, we we understand that death is what Allah determined. So no one knows the time, no one knows the place, no one knows the circumstances except Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. All we know is that it's gonna happen. And you know this is uh, uh, there's great wisdom in this, right? There's great wisdom in in this. Because Allah SWT live in this uh, like that, not knowing, because only Allah knows. Right? Uh, uh, nafsun nafsun mordin ardin We don't know. Only Allah knows stuff. This stuff. And Allah lives it like this so that this, this is supposed to uh, motivate us to be in a perpetual state of preparedness for death. Right? Because it's an inevitability. And since we don't know what it is, we should be in a perpetual state of preparedness. Right? For death. So that when death comes, we're ready. Right? Yeah, because it's not going to happen before the time. Yeah? It's not now, they're not going to do before them. This whole idea of, of, of people dying before their time and stuff is, is nonsensical. Right? It's nonsensical. It is not, it's not factual. You know, uh, it's not real. Uh, yes, it might be. It, you know, people talk about untimely death. It's untimely for who? It's untimely for you because you uh, uh, were not ready to accept. Right? But, it's, but it was on time. Malika Mok came exactly on the time that was determined for you. All right. So this this is this is this is the reality uh, uh, that we should. Uh, uh, this is where the Prophet Sallallahu encourage us that we should remember remember a death uh, uh, from time to time. We should remember and reflect on death uh, 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 from time to time. You know, uh, and 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 by doing so, uh, 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 we should. Uh, it will help us to 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 be uh, more prepared uh, uh, when it happens. So uh, when it does happen, you know it is a shock because it always happens suddenly, right? It always happens suddenly because most of the time uh, uh, we do not have the expectation of it happening. So uh, it happens just like piyama. Then we don't expect it happens, all right. So uh, because because of that, you know, uh, uh, sometimes there's there's a shock, right? There's a shock uh, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, as as our hearts burn right now for our brothers and sisters over there, 
uh, in Gaza, you know. But uh, uh, it 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 we should we should whenever we're gonna convey the news to someone, we should soften the impact. Try to soften the impact uh, uh, when we convey the news uh, to them uh, because it is tragic. Death is always tragic, right? It's, it's always tragic, and 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 therefore. Uh, it has a serious impact, and we should be cognizant of this impact, and therefore uh, try to soften that impact, and, and, and don't 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 um, uh, uh, try to to shock the person or frighten them, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, because uh, uh, on this it should be it should be, we should listen uh, to it. There's, there's a beautiful uh, story uh, that happened with some of the prophets or some of the companions. Uh, with and I don't know, many of you might hear the story of Reddit. Uh, uh, in 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 the as an authentic story uh, of Abu Talha and his wife Um Sulaim, right? And his wife Um Sulaim. Uh, Abu Talha this he had a son, and his son uh, got ill. Right? So he was very but was ill, uh, and, and and so on. You know, he's he's, he's worried and concerned about his son. Because the son got so got got very ill, and well, he went out to work and do what he had to do, uh, to do what he to, to do his business, and uh, while he was away, uh, his son passed away. His son passed away, and his uh, his wife Um Sulaim, she you know uh, put him in the room and make him comfortable. And when when uh, uh, Abu Talha returned, she didn't want to say, you know what happened. He's dead. You know she didn't she didn't do that, right? She she you know she she she's so kind and loving and compassionate for her husband, uh, uh, Abu Talha. You know she prepared a nice meal for him, you know, and and uh, and let him eat. So he eat. He organized himself. You know, she made herself uh, 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 attractive for him. You know, uh, they they had relations and everything at night. And then afterwards, when he's fully calm and, you know, then she mentioned to him about the son. Then she mentions to his son. So, you know, he went next day to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what happened. And the Prophet said, may Allah bless your night. Right? May Allah put barakah in your night. And Allah SWT prays them for that meal. Rasulullah make dua for them. You know, and how they handle it. You know, how they handle it. You know, and and and, and, and this is this is really how 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 it's important. Just like the Prophet himself, you know, he he he, he how he would handle, how he handle stuff. Uh, uh, such as this, you know, when when his beloved Ibrahim passed away, right? When his beloved Ibrahim passed away, Ibrahim, uh, the Prophet also had three sons, and uh, the only one that uh, there's Tahir and Tahir and stuff, you know, uh, but the only one that lived to to uh, to be to toddler age was Ibrahim. Right, the other rest pass as infants, uh, and and Ibrahim is the only one that left a toddler age. So the Prophet Sallallahu he had developed a real attachment and, 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 and affection for him, attachment to him because he's he's a toddler, and you know toddler, you know they tug at your heartstrings. So when when uh, he passed away, you know, and the Prophet Sallallahu is is you know he's washing them and he's preparing them for burial and stuff like that, you know. And and you make at the time and Rasulullah is crying. Tears is coming from his eyes. And the companion says, Oh Messenger of Allah, even you, you know, even you uh he says, Yes, the heart is sad. The heart is sad and the eyes will tear. But we'll only say what Allah SWT, what pleases Allah. Because Allah has taken what He has given, and we will. Learn. So the, the resoluteness, you know, when you understand this, that 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 great resolve, 
And so the Prophet prayed for prayed for 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 uh, uh, Abu Talha and and Um Sulaim, and 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 uh, they, they, she conceived that same night, and they, and she gave birth to a son, Abdullah, the Prophet, you know, to a son. And when she gave birth to the son, she took him to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua for him. And the Prophet made tahniq, that's where he chewed on the date a little bit and he put it in his mouth and he made dua for him, uh, uh, for Abdullah, and he, and he named him Abdullah. And, 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 and the companions reported on Abdullah that says that, uh, uh, there's a report that says that nine of his sons became half of the Quran. Nine of his sons was half of the Quran. Of the same time, you know, the 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 uh, it shows you know when 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 you resolute and reform stand firm in what is right and what is good, it is really beneficial. It really helps, you know, a lot. And you know, so uh, uh, we should uh, 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 do so uh, 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 and stand firm in 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 these conditions and stuff like that. And we should offer condolences, offer, uh, condolences to the family uh, uh, for this because they are, uh, are grieving. So we should uh, offer condolences to the family and, and, and make dua for the deceased and speak nice things about, that, about the deceased. Uh, we shouldn't speak negative things about them. Uh, speak nice things about the deceased. And, 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 and we should uh, uh, give our condolences and shows uh, sympathy and empathy uh, uh, to the family to bring comfort for them, you know, uh, uh, because uh, this 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 is, is, is what is required uh, at that time. Uh, of course, we should avoid uh, the innovations that has crept in to us. Uh, people, you know, crying loud and you know screaming and going on with all the other stuff and. Uh, uh, doing the, um, you know, uh, you know, they go to the grave and doing a lot of nonsensical things at the grave. That is not part of our, not part of our, our, our traditions and our manners. You know, uh, putting uh, candles and lights, well, just put lights and stuff. You went, you were in Muslim cemetery. You see lights. Uh, you got lights up there. Okay, he's dead and he can't see the light. What you put light for? But they got lights. And they put uh, all kind of stuff at the grave, you know. You wanted to put what and put flowers and stuff like that. He can't appreciate it when he was living. You didn't give him no flowers. They didn't put flowers. So he can't appreciate it. Give him his flowers when he's living. If you want to give flowers, give him nice some flowers when he's alive. He'll appreciate it. But he's dead. But you know, so give him doing flowers and all. It's a waste of money. All that stuff that people do uh, at the grave or. or uh, going and uh, sitting down in the grave and hanging out and and talking to them, he can't hear you, right? He's not, he's not, he can't, he can't converse with, he can't you know, converse with you <laughs> anyway. Put your code and you go and talk to them and stuff like. No, you go to the grave, you know. Yes, it's good to visit the graves because it reminds us that one day we'll be joining them, you know. Uh, uh, so we should go and visit the graves, yes, sir. but we can make dua for the, for 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 those. Uh, loved ones that are there, uh, but you know we should we should not do the stuff that people do uh, uh, that we adopt from out from. There's not far, there's not part of Dean from part of our Dean. There's other people's customs that they do, and we adopt it and bring it to our religion. We shouldn't we shouldn't be doing uh, uh, all those avoiding those things. You know they 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 want to do chronic readings and all kinds of stuff and so on. You know all of that. Now you want to do it. You know when it's when the person alive, you don't you don't encourage them to do to read Quran, you know, and, and stuff like. So you 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 need we need to stay within the the parameters of what Islam encourages us to do, and 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 and, and fulfill our obligations and stuff like that. There 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 are a number of issues that you know we get caught up in. That is not right. That is, is, is important for us to correct. May Allah make it easy for us uh, uh, in establishing uh, the, the, the proper adab in relation to these things uh, uh, and make it easy for us. Uh, 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 and this, you know, in our, in our bereavement at this moment, uh, we offer our condolences uh, to, to Sheikh Katanani, 
uh, or uh, one of our uh, leaders and teachers here uh, in Jersey, as he just lost his family in, in Gaza. Uh, 15 members of his family were, were, were killed. And so we we offer we offer our condolences to him and 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 to to the family and may Allah SWT, uh, bless all those who 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 are faced in this calamity with iman strong iman uh, and resolve and that he would all those who uh, who are killed in this ma in this matter that Allah SWT would uh, uh, elevate them among the shuhada. Uh, and and in general, inshallah. Uh, if there are any questions, I think this is what we have. If there are any questions or so, we can uh, take them, inshallah. No. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh in, in terms of you know there are some people of course as I said that might that you mentioned might be the situation is uh, uh they take things hard generally uh and yes they might faint or uh, so but uh it's important that they do not go overboard things that normally happen to you is 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 that is the case? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not hold you accountable for the things that you're not capable of. Some people, you know, they 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 cry profusely, or they cry very easily, you know. And uh, so they, they they it's just that they should not scream out, for instance. So crying, yes, it's crying. Okay, the prophet did cry. It's just the prophet never made noise when he cried. They just saw his eyes tearing, and you know, he's you know, he's, uh, he's but he was crying. And he says, yes, the eyes tear, you know, and because there's sadness in the heart. And grieving, crying helps grieving, right? Sadness inside the heart, uh, uh, crying does help, you know, to to release uh, grief, right? You know, this 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 is a proven psychologically that does that that crying does help because it helps you express the grief that is in your heart. And so it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, stay because sometimes that grief makes you sick, right? If you don't express it, it can make you sick uh, and create other problems for you, right? Create other problems for you because it could also push the other side and make you de depress, bring depression and, and, and stuff like that. So uh, crying is okay. It's just that the person, you know, some people, they just go overboard. Like this, this, the story of the sister, who was when her son died, you know, and she's just, you know, she just flattened it all out. And the Prophet told her, you have to be patient. You know, she said, but, you, know, you don't know what happened to me. You don't, I mean, it's not, it's not true. She, because she didn't pay attention. She, she, was, she was so caught up in her grief that she was oblivious, even to the Prophet speaking to her until she cut herself. And somebody <laughs> told her, you know, now she comes to apologize. So at the moment, yes, I know you want to scream. But uh, the prophet, as the prophet says, you only say or do what Allah what is pleasing to Allah. So we, this, this is where self-restraint comes in. But crying, yes, it's just screaming and uh, shouting. And uh, some people go on, you know, I mean, I remember uh, we had a, a situation, you know, I... I, I I, I sometimes volunteer, I volunteer with the police in the in the in the as a chaplain sometimes. So sometimes they come to me for stuff, you know. And uh, I I remember one case that happened. Uh, this lady, you know, her daughters, they they um she and her 
daughter and her husband over. Uh, they had some altercation, and you know there was something else. But she wound up; she died. He didn't kill her. She she had a, a med medical emergency, and he neglected her, and she died right on the floor. So when the mother came and the mother is screaming, and the family is all upset and everything, you know, because the you know, that was just happened, you know, and but the police had to try and control the situation, keep the keep him in the house and stuff like that, you know, and they came and they, and, and, they, and and they called me. They come, they come and got me. They said, you know, we got a situation. Could you could 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 you come and get you? It was Juma. I said, you know, okay, I'll go as long as you can get me back for Juma because I got to do Juma. So just get me back. And this is no problem. They came and they picked me up and we went over there. And it's, it, it is, you know, she's, uh, she's you know, really uh, uh, animated uh, in the street going on and stuff like that. You know, so right away, you got to remind of Allah. So immediately I reminded of Allah. So I, without saying anything to them, I just started. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. And I repeated it and repeated it loud enough for it to. And then she, she started to say it eventually. And she calmed right down. Just remind them of Allah. Remind them of what they're supposed to be doing. And once she remembers, she might, she's a Muslim, you know, she's a believer. So at the moment, at the moment, it's like, oh, shock, her daughter is dead and. This and that and the circumstances she's going on, how she did, and he loved to die on the floor. This and that and that and that. You know, she's she's really animated, and uh, in, in the street going on, um, but uh, and the, and the police would not allow to go in the building because he's in the building, and if they go in there, it might harm him, right? So uh, you know, she. It, but just reminding her of of Muslim. This is what we say. We say, Inna lillahi. We turn to Allah SWT. And we did this. And by the, by the time I get the second time, or third time I said it, she joins. It reach, it gets inside her mind, reach to her. She responds and they start saying it. The other family starts saying, and the situation calm right out. Because you remind them, you know, so sometimes they just they just need to remind them. And 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 they will they will they will they calm down and get and come back in, in line. When you remind the believer, um. one uh, one quick question on an important topic today. Uh, we are in the day and age of uh, sensationalization of the news. Yes. Vaccine. Yeah. Uh, what is a good etiquette for us to follow when there are people who are sick? And the family wants to control how to hear the news. And people, you know, people visit uh, one time, and then they are talking about a person who is sick about others with good intentions. Also, at times, uh -huh. some others can go and visit uh -huh. the sick, and pray for them. But what is the good balance between, uh, you know, letting the family control the news of uh, how to how to share, how 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 many people to tell, versus others who are visiting. They themselves share the news with the rest hmm. of the community to make them aware of the situation. Yeah, if 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 the the uh, the family the family uh, whoever is responsible in the family is a you know, responsible person should take responsibility for informing people in the right way. This is very often that uh, when you don't. Uh, like official spokesman, like kind of uh, official announcement or something like that. Uh, if you don't have that, then this one says something and then someone add to it. It comes almost like rumor. It creates a much bigger problem because people will be saying things that is not not really true too. Sometimes uh, this happened and that, this that and that, because it becomes almost like rumor. And rumor is a big, big thing. It creates some big problems, and sometimes it's not what what it really is. Like even with this whole situation that we have now, so there should be some official uh, person, person responsible who is going to take responsibility for to give the uh, information as to 
what is the situation without sensationalizing it, right? Because we should never try to sensationalize, create it, create a bigger problem. That creates a bigger problem too, because I said you know once you start, uh, it comes trickle out like that. It comes and this one tell the next one and that one tell the next one, and they add and this you know and it comes with it all you know by the time it is, it's it's a lot it's a mess, you know and people will be saying stuff that they shouldn't be saying. Uh, about what happened because they don't really have the actual story. They just saying what they heard, and you know, and they and w- or what they understood about what they heard, and they add their two cents to it. So it should always, you know, someone when somebody someone should take uh, charge. Right, we see a swing because as the people might be in shock and stuff like that. We see the example from this. We take it the example when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. Right when his when the prophet died, uh, everybody went into shock. Everybody went into shock, including Omar, radiallahu anhu. You know, one of my favorite, one of my favorite people. You know, he 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 went into shock, and he was saying, anybody who says that that the prophet died, I could, you know, I, uh, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And the the, the 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 you know, this was the situation. Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu. You know, he goes in, he confirms that, yes, the prophet is dead. Once he confirms, he closes the prophet's eyes, he kisses the prophet, and he confirms it. And then he comes out and he makes the official statement. He took charge of the situation. He came and he took charge. And even Omar, he says, like, it's for the first time I've heard that. Everybody settled in because someone took charge. But if you leave it just like this, all kind of, because all kind of stuff is going on. Nobody knows for sure what's happening, right? Because nobody went in to see. No, no, nobody. Uh, but he came, he went, he checked. Once he confirmed that the prophet died, he came out and he took charge. And, you know, once he took charge and made the official alongside whoever worshipped, uh, you know, uh, Muhammad, then know for sure he is dead. But who worship Allah? Allah is ever living. It brings back perspective right away. Perspective came back to the people. Everybody settled out because somebody took charge. So someone has always the imminent situation, calamity situation like that. Somebody should always step up and you know, like the official spokes or the official voice to settle things up to bring about some you know calmness and and stuff. So. Yeah. Um, this is a question from the online. Yes. Um, so you had mentioned about things to avoid um, saying or doing when you're visiting somebody who's sick. And maybe you already addressed it, but the question was, uh, I'm sure most of these apply to visiting someone who has also lost somebody if you're visiting someone. Yes. Passed away. Um, is there anything in particular we should avoid um, doing or saying when you're uh, visiting for condolences and as a follow-up is it okay for we want to lost someone to turn visitors away and have them come at a better time or what's the etiquette of that um, you have to receive people who want to visit for condolences or can you ask them to come at a different time or very very often in the in the in the initial moment the 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 person might need time to process it themselves. So it, it, it doesn't, you know, sometimes immediately is not the best time to talk to them because they might need to process it for themselves. So uh, uh, while trying to process it, they don't want to be bombarded with having to entertain anybody. So you give them a few minutes to, to, to uh, unless it's a very close relative that who is was part of it, and then then could um thing. But uh sometimes people some people might need a moment to process, you know, to process what has happened, you know. Uh, uh and so they, they might not take a call, you call them and they're not gonna answer. Uh because uh, sometimes what happens to you find that uh somebody here and everybody here and everybody calls. So every minute they, you know, they answer one person, two person, three person. By the time they, you know, they're still trying to process this thing, and 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 they got everybody's calling them. 
All right. So uh, sometimes we we have to consider of them themselves. They, this is as is, as we said that death is death is a shocker. Right? It is a shocker because it always seems to be sudden. Right. Uh, uh, so it, sometimes people might need a moment to process it. Right. And um, so when you and when you do. Uh, if you're gonna go visit, you should, uh, especially at those times, it's best not to uh, spend any long time. It's just maybe offer your condolences and leave right away. You know, so you're just showing your concern and your sympathy, uh, 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 but you're not burdening them. You, 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 your visit is very, very quick uh, with them when, when they do open. But avoid doing wrong things, doing negative things. You know, as I said, some people, you know, they always, they, 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 they cry. Like for instance, we have, we we adopted the the, the traditions of the people uh, that uh, when you know after the person, you know, you you the person is buried dead, and you know the person dies in the family, then the family has to prepare food for people. That's not Islamic. Right? The family should, people are supposed to be compassionate to them. They're the one who's grieving. So whether you go there to eat, you know, you hear people say, you know, I'm at the, 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 the house, you know, and, and, and they never had anything to serve. I mean, but if you went there for that, then you shouldn't have gone. You shouldn't have gone there in the first place. Because uh, if you're not going to take something for them, you know, then you shouldn't go if you're looking for something. But there, you know, there's some of the traditions that we adopt. They're not Islamic traditions. They're not Islamic traditions, right? There are other, you know, there are traditions outside of Islam that people that we have adopted. So once a then the family has to go and uh, uh, cook and prepare stuff because people are gonna come and people are expecting that you should have something to serve to serve them with, you know, and stuff. No, they they didn't invite you as guests. You come in to show condolences and to give condolences and show concern to the family. So you shouldn't come with the expectation to have something to, to eat and stuff like that, you know. And as I said, I've heard people complain, you know. I mean, I ain't got nothing to eat for these people. I've heard complaints like that after people visiting the, the house of a sick person, you have a person at night, you know, with the family and stuff like that. But uh, uh, these are these are not, they're not Islamic practices. These are not Islamic etiquette. You you carry stuff for them. You go and visiting and taking. Yeah, you visit and you take something for them. So it 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 it, 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 it reinforces your your concern for them. Right. But I think you know, most of the time you cannot go into <laughs> most of the time even at our childhood time it was the Family outside who lost them, they used to bring the food, mm. not the actual family. Yeah. That was even at that time and we were. Yeah. yeah. So normal practice is not the immediate family. Yeah. Other family members, they bring the food and that's what the Islam says. Yeah. But here and there, some people, structural thing might have happened, it, but I think in general, it is always. Uh, somebody else, yeah, okay. somebody should bring. It should be, that's how it should be. Somebody else, not not them. Yeah. But there's additional burden on the family itself. It's an additional burden. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are we any other questions or so? Are we? Okay. Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Okay, there's, there's a proposition up there. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, your words and answering our questions, but I also want to bless you uh, for traveling all the way here, um, helping us out, and I want to continue to give us the best of etiquette um, in everything that we do, mm -hmm. and continue the legacy of our predecessors who gave us knowledge, gave us actions, gave us examples of all that mean. Mm -hmm. uh, with that said, I think, I, I believe uh, Dr. Wazid's still teaching um, his class, but we can probably pray the over. Um, and